we're good. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk on uh, Apache Maven Survival Guide. Bring it on mode. Bring it on mode, of course, is from a video game. I don't know uh, if you guys know Doom. Anybody playing Doom? Raise of hands, show of hands. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, why is the talk called Bring it on mode? Because um, what I face, or, or my colleagues, what we face when we are out there, that we want to change things in Maven builds and in CI and whatnot in the projects, but uh, we usually have different customers and it's not always easy to install things. And that's why it's only standard plugins, no external tools. So that's why it's bring it on mode. So you don't get any power ups or something you can buy. You just have to use what you have, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you five slides, and then we will dive in and build a lot of things. And everything I do is on GitHub later, so you can check it out so you don't have to write anything down. Okay. Let's start. Some, some words about me. My name is Richard. I'm a Java developer for almost 20 years now. This slide is getting old. And I love clean code, talking about clean code a lot, open source. And also, I'm um, the leader of the Java user group in Oberpfalz, which is in Bavaria in Germany. And I'm a co-organizer of JCon, which is a very good uh, Java conference as DevOps is. So, to get uh, uh, a little bit to know why I'm giving this talk and what's, what's behind this and what my experience is, I'll show you for two slides what we do. We build rapid clips, which is on the t-shirts that you can wear from right now on. And this is a tool that allows you to build uh, web applications very, very easily with a what you see is what you get editor. So it's free, check it out. And um, looks something like this, it's Eclipse based. Um, and it helps people move from, the, uh, from other languages to Java because uh, you don't have to know much Java, it helps you a lot. So there's something where you can get started. Okay, and also what we do, because our tools are free, we offer uh, consulting services for Java. So if you need any help with anything that's Java related, just let us know and we will tell you if we know something about it, we can help you with. Okay, let's get started with a talk. Uh, we will talk about uh, minimal basics, so you can follow the talk and we are all on the same level and then we will just code away. Okay, in Q&A of course. So what is uh, Maven? Maven is an amazing build tool and dependency management and it's always great if uh, one thing does two things, right? That's always the best. So, we will talk a little bit about uh, POM. POM is the... Um, is this POM XML file that you have, and you can have a, a super POM, which we will need in the, in the talk later ahead. And your POM, your POM XML, that uh, inherits from this super POM. The super POM comes with your Maven installation. And you can, of course, have um, uh, as much as uh, parent POMs, layers between the super POM and your POM, but we don't uh, gonna need that today. Okay, and then some life cycle phases. Um, of course, this talk is about Maven, so we have to talk about Maven clean, verify, and all that stuff, and clean and install, and, and so on. But let's talk about these phases. These are not so interesting. I guess everybody can see validate is to validate the project, compile is to compile, test is to run the tests, package is to build something that you can ship, and interesting is verify, because it runs checks and sees if your, if your project is basically working. And then the very interesting one is install. And there's always a big discussion if you need install, and we will dive into this later in the talk, if you need install. And um, install, what does install? Install just takes what you built in the package phase and puts it in your local M2 repository on your machine. That's basically all it does, it's just copy and deploy, this is the most misunderstood point of, of the lifecycle phases. I get asked a lot of times, is deploy, deploy to my staging system, deploy to my production system. No, 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 no. Deploy, usually use containers today. Deploy is taking this artifact that you built in the packaging phase and put this on a Nexus or Artifactory or something like that on a Maven repository server. So um, deploy is not what you might think it is. Okay, and then dependency management. Uh, there was a, a talk from Brian, I guess, uh, 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 about security. This is something we will talk to, where he uh, showed dependencies in your project. And in my project, I have Jasper reports and I have uh, my cache library. So these are the two dependencies that I need in my project that my code needs. And these are the ones that I declare. These are my direct dependencies. And as you might know, Jasper reports or other libraries can bring in other dependencies, which are transitive dependencies. In this case, this is the PDF library and the Bockel library. 
And um, I did not specify them. They are just given to me by Jasper reports. And keep this in mind, we will need this later. So, OK. These are all the bas basics you need to know for this talk. And now we will start live coding. And as I said, everything I do is on GitHub. I will share the URL later so you can check it out. And I have commits for every step I do. So you can go ahead later um, when you're back at the office and see all the steps that I did. And I have all the commands also on there. OK. Let's. Get a shell, okay. And make this a little bit bigger, huh? Okay, is this big enough for you guys to see? Okay. Good. So what, what do we have? We have a, a very simple project and we want to start out with a very minimal POM. And I have a new tool here that I want to try today. And this is my Git history, and this is a very, very simple POM. So there's nothing in it. There's basically, I'm basically just saying what the artifact, the group ID is, and then I'm, I'm specifying that I want to use uh, as an encoding UTF-8, which is very good. You should always do that. If you don't do that, uh, this will default to a, a machine-specific uh, encoding. So if you build it on a Windows machine, as I do, and you go to CI, which is usually on Linux, uh, this is going to be hell for you. So don't do that. And uh, I'm running with 1.8 because what I'm seeing out there is a lot of people use 1.8. I'm not saying use 1.8. This is just what most people do out there. And most projects that we are confronted with have that. So please run a higher version of Java. OK. And what we do in this talk is we, we um, evolve this POM XML with some things that we need in our project. And we have some levels. So we are at level zero. We're just starting the game. It's bring it on mode. Um, and we will start. And we will see if our, um, if our project builds. And I will do a Maven verify. And we will see what happens. And also, always make sure that you plug in your notebook. Um, because if you don't, your build will be slow. Um, I tried to build this yesterday, and I forgot to plug it in. So it took a very, very long time to build everything, and I was wondering. So plug it in, makes it faster. OK, let's see where we're at. This looks too good. It's not broken. OK, it should be broken. Let's break it. OK, let's see. And it took too long, of course. So this is my build. Took five seconds. Don't, don't get hung up on, on the build time. This is just a laptop. And what we see is we have um, everything running smooth, different Maven plugins uh, getting executed, and then we have tests. And the first thing that I see is uh, I don't have info in the, in, the, in the first place in the line. This bugs me because I hate this when it's not real tidy. So we're going to have to do something about that. Um, but OK, it says the build worked. So. OK, I'm, I guess I'm fine. So let's, let's work with this. Let's work with this. OK, the first thing we want to do is we want to add some code. Because right now, we don't have any, any code. I just have my POM XML. Let me show you my, my files here. So OK. OK, I have a uh, demo Java. Let's look at this. I have some code, so very basic Java. Don't make, try to make sense of this. This is just basic my J Java class that I wanted to compile. OK, um, the first thing people are going to ask me, um, OK, what, what, what do you want to do with this? Um, you need tests, you need dependencies, this is not working. Um, but this, this is not what my project looks like. So let's make it a little bit more like your project. But first, fix um, this nasty test thing here. OK? And make it look a little bit better. And also, I need to add some tests. Let me see how I, uh, if I can do this. Let me add some tests. And what I want to do is add some tests here. OK.
So I got a JUnit dependency for test and I picked 5.1.0 and I added a, a test class also. Let me show you the test class. And don't, don't worry, what I do on the second screen is I just get a different commit from my Git repository and that helps me so I don't have to write code. Okay, let's look at this one. And this is a very, very good test, right? Okay? Good, just for demo sake. Okay, and now try that again. Run the build again and we will also do, we'll again do Maven Verify. And surprisingly, I added a test and I had a test annotation there and it does not execute my test. So that's a bad scenario. Um, the first thing I want to do, if something like this happens, if anything happens in Maven that you are not suspecting, you should check out um, the following command, which is Maven version plugin and look at the, the versions of your uh, plugins. So I'm not saying look at the versions of your dependencies, which we will do later. We will look at the versions of our plugins. And that's, this is where a little bit of magic comes in. Give it a, a second to run. And this is where, what I taught you before. Um, Maven brings plugin versions for you in the super POM. Because in our POM, we did not define any plugin versions. As you can see, this thing is basically empty. There are no plugin versions. So where are they coming from? They're coming from your Maven installation. And your colleague, she may have a, a different installation on her system. Uh, your CI server may have a different installation. And so you get different plugin versions. And as you can see, there seems to be a plugin version that does not allow me to uh, execute my uh, JUnit, uh, JUnit Jupyter 5 tests. So because the standard that we get is just four. And that, that, that does not work. So let's see what this, this gave us. Okay, this gave us a lot of output here, as you can see, and some errors and some warnings. And okay, that's just too much. Let's, let's fix this and introduce the Enforcer plugin. This is something that you should always do in every project. Use the Enforcer plugin. We will add this to our POM XML. Um, let's see here. Okay. I added this build block and I put in my Enforcer plugin. So this Enforcer plugin can do a lot more things than I'll show here. I just use very basic things. I say I want uh, a minimum version of uh, Maven that is 3.1.1 and Java uh, 1.8. And let's see what happens then, because this interacts with this other plugin. And I am hoping to get a very uh, clean output here. Okay looks much better, so it's much less output, and now I can learn and read and do something. And it basically is saying me, you have plugins in your build, like the plea clean, the compiler plugin, and so on, they are executed, and uh, they are not specified, so you get what the system has. And this is a bad situation, because you want to specify all, they, all those, to have those in your Git repository, in your POM XML, so when you come back later, let's say, you build this, and in uh, eight weeks, the customer says, hey, we have a problem. We need to build the exact same build as last time, uh, but fix this. And in the meantime, our CI got updated. So you could get a different output or, or, or result. Um, not with this, because with this, you're very sure that Maven uses the same plugins as last time, because when you check out the code from eight weeks before, you get those plugins in your POM XML. So this is going to be the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add those to my um, POM XML. As you can see, I have this uh, Maven Surefire plugin in version 22, 20, uh, 20, 20, 22 and 2. This is a very nice version number. Um, and let's see if this works now. We're going to do a, a verify first and have a look at this. Ah, this looks good. We have tests run one, so this is very good, what we expected. And also I've got my info um, statements in the, in the front of the line, which looks very nice now. Okay, that's very good. Okay, and let's do this for the other plugins also, so we're gonna go here 
and add the other plugins. And as you can see, this is a lot of stuff and you have to decide for each plugin which version you want to use. So that's something you have to figure out on your own. Maybe you want to use just, uh, just always the latest version, that's if you are the, the risky kind of person. So let's see what this, what this gives me now. I'm going to again look at the, the version uh, display and now it says, okay, this line is important. You have all versions specified. This is very, very good. So this means um, a apart from some corner cases, you have a reproducible build, which means if you build this with a later ver a Maven version, this will almost all the time work. There is a breaking change in Maven uh, 3.8.1, which requires you to have HTTPS on all your repositories. That will still break, but this does not ha happen often with Maven. So you're pretty much guaranteed that this is reprodu reproducible. Um, of course, it's telling me that I have um, updates. I could update, um, but this is always like uh, with dependencies, it's up to you if you want to update your plugins. Um, most of the time, it's a good idea to do so, but you should make sure that everything still works and not blindly just update everything. Okay, this is very, very good because this means we are at level one this was our level one boss that we just um, that we just hit. This works. Um, I have to mention there are also other things you can do. You can bring your own Maven installation with a Maven wrapper, um, which is in my show notes. There's a link, uh, which basically means if you build a project, you don't call Maven, but you will um, download a specific version of Maven and that will build your project. So you are very, very sure that nothing goes wrong. Um, if you can do this, do this. If you're not allowed to bring your own Maven installation, you can, stack, uh, you can stick with this one. Okay, let's go to um, number two, level number two. And this one is about dependencies. We gotta add some dependencies to our project because this is what developers like to do. And we will, let me see, we will go here. and we will add some dependencies. Let's see what we have here. So we add Apache Commons Lung 3 and Binutils. And why do we add those? Because they are um, needed in all projects and you should always add them. Just a joke. Only add dependencies that you really need. Okay, let me see how this works. Uh, we need this one. Okay. As you can see, bean utils. I do stuff with bean utils. Very great. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your projects. Uh, by show of hands, how many dependencies do you have in your project? Who has five dependencies or less in their project? Nobody? Okay, that's great. You're all being honest. Who has 10 or less? 20 or less. Okay, one person. Nice. 20 or less. Okay. 30 or less. Oh my God, I don't know. So many dependencies. Okay, that's great. Sounds about right. That's what, what the real world is. Okay, that's great. So let's see. Uh, spring is here. Uh, yesterday I was sun in London. I was shocked. Um, this is great. So let's slim up a little bit and lose some, some weight. Okay. Um, in this code base, you probably have seen that I'm not using all of my dependencies. So I would take a lucky guess and say I don't use Apache Commons in this project because there's one class and it does not use it. Okay, um, this is easy. I know because this is a project with one class. How do you do this with a project with a thousand classes? How, how would you do that? And there's, of course, a Maven plugin, because this is this talk about Maven plugins, uh, that can help you with this. And this Maven plugin has a specific bug. And therefore, you can't use the, uh, the latest version. You have to use this version, 3.1.2. Uh, and if the, bugs get, the bug gets fixed, you can of course, you can use the latest version. But for now, just use this version. Okay. And this gives me a very nice output. And this is, these are two sections. Let's look at the first section. The first section is used undeclared dependencies found. Okay, it's telling me 
I'm using a dependency called um, uh, JUnit Jupyter API, and I did not declare this dependency. Okay, let's see if this is right. So, this is right, because here I'm, uh, I'm declaring engine, not API. Okay? So, where do I get this API from? Because it's magic. And what I can do is, I can use, of course, another Maven command. And this is Maven dependency tree. Maybe you have a nice IDE that helps you with that. And this dependency tree shows me what is brought in by my declared dependencies. Because remember, we have two declared dependencies, or three, with the test one. This one is OK. This brings nothing. This binutils brings logging and collections. And of course, we know logging is bad since December. And here we have JUnit. And the engine brings the API and other stuff. And all this stuff is in your project and could be used as uh, a tech surface because I can actually, uh, if I get an, an um, access to your system uh, with uh, a bug or something like that, I can um, call classes, use serialization exploits, and then I can try to execute classes from all these jar files. So, okay. Back, back, to, back to our uh, output before. It said, okay, I verified that, I made a mistake, I did not declare API, I should declare this because we should be good developers and declare what we want to use. Um, because now we are, we are running a risk of JUnit saying we don't bring the API anymore and um, I update my dependency on the engine, the engine removes the API uh, dependency and my code will break. So we should declare what our code uses. We will fix this in a minute. And we have a second section here, which is called unused declared dependencies. And as I suspected, it tells me that I don't use commons long three. And this is gold, because this means I can delete it. And deleting uh, dependencies is always nice. I'm losing weight, I'm losing attack surface, I'm losing also a computation time, and my, my deployable gets smaller. So this is a win, a total win. And also it tells me, um, that I declared engine, I'm not using it. So this is something the static code analysis cannot see. It, it can't see that I need an engine to execute a test. So we will fix this also. So how are we going to fix this? Let's see. We will get some, yeah, we get some Marie Kondo in here. Do anybody know Marie Kondo? Netflix watchers, okay. Nice uh, lady that, that cleans up houses for a living, okay. So, let's see what we did. We deleted the comments long dependency. Okay, that's gone, that's good. Also, we added the API dependency, which we were told. And let's see, this is not the best display here. Um, this is also gone. We're gonna have to look at it here. Let's have a look at it here. So, okay. Still, the engine is still here, which is okay. We we look at it here, here, and we we added the engine here, also to suppress this warning because, as I said. Um, this plugin does a static code analysis and it can't see that you need it. If I would remove the engine, it, the, the test wouldn't run because there is no implementation for the, the JUnit API. So, and let's see how it comes back now. When I run this again, again with this version number, so I get the bug-free version, I get this one. No dependency problems found, which tells me I have declared everything I use in my code and um, I have nothing declared that is not used in my code, which is very good. And you can also uh, configure this in a way that it breaks your build if there is something in your, in your uh, code base that you don't need. So this is very good. Okay. This is all very good. Everything is sparking joy perfectly. Okay. This was level two. Now let's secure our project and see what we can do. The first step uh, for securing our project, we already did that. Because by removing dependencies from our project, we also 
uh, reduce the attack surface, so we made it a little bit more secure already because we don't have to worry about any bugs that are in Apache Commons lung, for example. So this is very good. But let's go further. You can't delete all your dependencies. Of course, you can, but you have to write all your stuff your own, so nobody does that. So we have to make sure that our dependencies that we are using are safe. And we can do this by, uh, with a lot of tools that will scan your uh, dependencies for CVEs. And basically, there is a database out there that contains um, known problems to software uh, packages, uh, which is called CVEs. And uh, there's a database, and you can just ask the database, hey, is there a problem in any of my dependencies? And the database will tell you, and there's a Maven plugin that, that I used here that will tell you this, and it tells me there's a, there's a warning, of course, and my binutils in, in the version um, 193 has a problem, and you uh, even get a report that you can look at and you can show to your manager. Let's see where that report is. Okay, that one is here. Okay, so it tells me my pizza backend is, is fine, um, except for this dependency, and there's also uh, a lot of information that you can use to find out if this is something that you should act on um, in five minutes, an hour, or in three days, um, because you can see if you're using this or not using this, or it's just um, laying around and you can add it, uh, um, delete it with your, or upgrade it with your next uh, release, or you have to have a hotfix or something like that. So, okay, most of the time it's very easy to fix those, you just increase the version number because there is a patch for it, so this is easy, and we're done. So let's patch this, this is very, very easy. If I find my cursor and let's patch this. Okay. As I said, the patch is very, very easy. It's just adding the four here. Um, the tool also allows you to upgrade to the latest dependencies. As I said, don't do this blindly. Always test this because you could break your code with this also. Okay, let's see, let's run this again. And as I said, this is the free tooling. Um, this check, checks the CVE data, e database. There are a lot of toolings out there from different vendors that can do this and uh, better things and have a deeper analysis or analyze your Docker containers or whatnot. But this is just the thing you can do without installing anything and just running it. And this time we got a success and it says there is no, um, no problems in my build. So, uh, as of today, there is no known vulnerability in my project. This can change tomorrow. And this is something you should keep in mind. Just because you don't run your build, I hope you run your build at night or some other times, um, you, don't, you only get this when you build this. So if tonight there is a, a CVE on a library that I have in this project, I, I won't know it until I build again. So this is something to keep in mind. So you're not totally safe, you're just safe for right now. Okay. So this is level three. Let's go to level four. This is always fun because this one is called saving time, money and the planet Earth. Um, why is this so? Because um, we try to make our build faster and we will profile it and, and see what, what is taking so long. So this is not just about your time if you want to go home or if you want to fix that, that bug um, faster. This is also about how much you have to pay in the cloud for your builds and also how much CO2 your builds are causing the world. So, very good cause. Let's dive in. There is a, a nice thing called um, Maven uh, Profiler Plugin, uh, extension, sorry, extension. And uh, why is this called extension in a plugin? Because it's a little bit of different uh, technique. And we will add that here. And this is a very nice trick to install something without installing something. Because you can create this uh, Maven folder just in your Git repository, so you don't have to touch the CI server. And here are some more things, but for that, what I want to show you is just this one. And this is an uh, extension file, and this is basically like adding, adding a dependency, but you're adding an extension to the build. 
And yeah, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. And we're going to run this. And to enable it, we have to run our build with a flag. So let's do this. And this is where we're going to discuss Maven Clean Verify or Clean Install. So let's see. Okay, and we have to add the profile. So with this parameter, we're going to start this profiling process. Of course, I know the profiling process will take up some CPU cycles, but it's giving me a report and we can look up the report and can see what consumed which time on this machine. This can differ. Um, I will talk a, b a little bit more about it, but um, building on a Windows machine is not the ideal setup, I'd say, even though I'm doing it on Windows. Um, it's faster on Linux or Mac OS. Okay, let's see, where is our profiler report? Okay, this one. Let's see, okay. So we have tests that took uh, over a second and we have other plugins that are here. Um, and we can see what each plugin, which, which time each plugin consumes. So. This is not uh, a very good example because I have uh, uh, only a few classes in there. Normally in your project there would be uh, um, hundreds or thousands of classes. Not everybody is building microservices. There are still people that are building monolith and they are big. And so always keep that in mind. I use only a few classes in these demos because I have to build a lot of times and I don't want to take all your time looking at my builds running. So we're going to say... Um, Okay, compile takes some time, even though it's only one class. So it seems to have like a ramp up time to start the compiler or something like that. Um, that should be very close to this. And we would think that adding more classes would make that process a little bit slower. Um, also clean, which in this case only had to clean a few files. If you have a bigger project, there are more files. Clean would take a little bit longer. Okay. So this is good, so we see how this works. And now we have to, to do a little bit of discussion about this clean install, clean verify. Okay, let's have a look at clean install and see what changes if we do clean install. And then we can compare and see what that means for us. Okay, we do the clean install. We have a new report, and it, it's always on the wrong screen. And here we can see that now we have install, which took not that long, because as I said, it's just copying a file to your local repository. So um, why is it now so bad to call clean install versus just uh, verify? So there are two parts of the story. Uh, calling install is not that bad. Calling install, as you can see, adds only a slight overhead. So this discussion, I think this comes from Maven 2, where you had to have install on a multi-module project. You don't have to do this anymore in Maven 3, but it doesn't add any substantial uh, overhead. So that's not too bad. Okay, so my opinion, writing install is not too bad. Verify a little bit better, if you just want to see if it works. Okay. But what about clean? So clean, this is a whole other discussion. Clean is bad. Why is it bad? Clean doesn't take much time here, but it has hidden costs. So um, just deleting a bunch of files usually is kind of fast, but the problem we get with this clean is we destroy everything we can reuse. So there is no reuse between the builds. So what I would as expect is I have thousand classes and I change one class, then the, com the compiler should figure out that it should build maybe one class and the others could stay, stay the same. Okay, if I changed method um, uh, definitions or the class name, maybe other classes have to uh, be rebuilt. But basically it should be something like a lot of classes should stay the same and should not be required to be recompiled um, and the other classes should be recompiled. Okay? And Every time I, I put clean, I just delete all classes and say, 
dear build, please do everything again. Okay, and this is the point where you can, can save a lot of money. If you have a, a Javadoc plugin in there or something like that, this takes a long, long time to generate Javadoc. Um, and this is very good when you leave clean uh, out of the picture, so you don't have to recreate all your Javadoc. So this speeds up your build. And we will have a look at it right now. Let's see. Let's see. So what we do is, if we run only verify without the clean, my guess would be, as I have not changed any classes, um, it should, oh, okay, I had a typo. It should not compile anything because I have not changed any classes and it just should, it should just reuse all the classes that I had. So let's see what, what it did. Okay, it's saying uh, compiling one, uh, is this test? It's here. It says changes detected, recompiling the module, compiling two source files. This is strange. So how can this happen? I only have one source file and one test file. The test file is here. So I have three files. Okay. So this is what we see all the time. So there's a new uh, developer in the team and he added something or a colleague and you didn't know that she did that. And she had a different demo class and it was demo two. And um, later in the process, she figured out she doesn't need the class. So she com commented everything out and committed this file. And now your build is painfully slow. Okay, why is that? Uh, if, you, uh, if you want to have some trouble in the office, do that, okay? Yeah? If you don't like your colleagues, do that. Um, so the process is something like this. The compiler looks at the, the, the folder, the target folder with the class files and says, um, hey, is the class file older than the Java file? Um, so I don't have to build. And if the, the, the Java file is newer as the class file, I should build because some, the, class, the, the Java file seems to have changed. So I should build. So in this case, there is no Java, uh, there is no class file. There is a Java file and the compiler comes and says, hey, there's a Java file, demo two, and there is no class file. So it was obviously it was not built. So I will try and build it. And the output of this is no class file because there is no class to be built. So uh, this, is some, this is some heavy stuff. Okay, how to find that? Because of course you have a project with thousands of classes. How to find that? There is a nice option you can, you can take here. Let me just check that. You can do an X, um, which tells Maven, Maven to write everything in the console that it does, and this is a lot of stuff. And then you have to know what to look for. And I'm very lucky I know what to look for. I need to look for stale. Okay, let's see. Because with thousand files, it's hard to find. And here it tells me there is a stale file and it's demo two. And now he's recompiling the module. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, good. And this solves the mystery, but not totally, because I still have a problem here. My problem still is that he says he's doing both files and also the tests. And this is not, not, not ideal because, in my opinion, it should only try to compile the one file that is not there, but is doing both. And this is because compiler optimization is hard and it seems like they quit and just say, it's too hard to figure out what files are um, involved or impacted in this, just build everything new, okay? So try to avoid that uh, if you can, because this will save a lot of a lot of time. Okay, and you will see this in your um, in your reports. Okay, now we have level four, so our build is also fast, as fast as it can get. Um, there are different ways uh, to make it faster. I want to show you one, and this is. Oh no, I lost the network. 
Okay, no problem, we got that back. And what I have here is um, a machine. Actually, this is a cloud machine from Oracle Clouds. They have a very nice free instances. I use one of those for this demo because it's always the same. And let me see what I have to do. I go in the, in the directory where my code is. And from there, I'm going to run a build. OK, Maven clean verify. I know I'm, I'm doing clean because I want to compare something. something. So, and this runs, and it takes a lot, a lot of time. Uh, builds on the cloud, um, on every cloud, are usually slow because you don't get real CPUs. You get vCPUs, and yeah, it, it, most of the time, it takes a while. OK? You can always add um, a better CPUs or more memory or what you need to, to increase the, the speed, but this will get, get only get you so far. We need something better, and there's something better that's called Maven Daemon. And as you can see, I'm just adding a D after the Maven command, and then it's all the same. And this Maven Daemon is very, very fast because it uses some techniques that are um, known to computer mankind for as long as computer mankind is around. There are demons in the background that will uh, save you the hassle of starting a, a JVM for the build, and it will reuse some resources. And as you can see, this takes two seconds, and the other build, uh, I forgot to look how, much, how long it took. It took 12 seconds. So um, this is very, very good. And of course, this depends on your own build and what you have, but this is also a way how you can speed up your build. OK, this was level four, and let's do level five. This is just paperwork. Yeah, We're done with the, the real work. Let's do paperwork. And paperwork is to make your legal department happy and maybe have some insight in your project. And there are nice Maven plugins that help you with that. And one of those is um, Project Info, re Info Reports Dependencies, which will give you a dependency report. And the other one we will do both is the License Third Party Report that will show you if you just use open source projects with good licenses and you are in a safe space um, and don't have to go to jail for using those dependencies. Okay, they are located in the site folder. And we have the third party report and the dependencies. Third party report looks like this. I like this one because of the green check marks. And it just uh, says that there are good licenses or licenses on these projects. The, um, it's a little bit misleading. It also puts a green check mark if there is a license, and the license said you have to pay a $1 million. But um, it says there is a license defined, which is good, and you can get a lot of more details out of this report. Even better is this one, the dependency report, because this one has additional information. It also has uh, what license are, uh, uh, licenses are on there. It has the dependency tree, as we've seen on the, on the console and it has some stats about my dependencies and how much classes in the, uh, are in there and, and stuff like that. And as you can see, um, this project with one class has 905 uh, classes now. So, very good. Great job. Done a lot of work deploying almost a thousand classes. Ah, that's good. Okay. So, that's about it with the live coding. Let's see, I promised you a link to all of this. And of course, the Maven Demon, we talked about this already. Jeremia says it took the Hazelcast build down um, about 30%. This is very good. And also, now is the time to scan or photograph this one. If you are uh, very brave, you can scan this and see if it hacks or not. And uh, this is the URL to the GitHub repository where you get every step and you get every um, command that I use today in this presentation. Okay. Got still seeing some phones. Okay, I'll leave it here. Um, okay. 
that's about it from, from me. Um, we have five minutes left. If you have questions right now and want to talk, I'm here. Um, if not, find me, talk to me, uh, follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe, of course. I don't have anything to like and subscribe. Other. But, okay, any questions now? Everybody is totally satisfied with this build. Okay, yeah. Uh, we have to wait for a mic. Uh, Uh, my favorite Star Wars character? Oh, very good question. Best question I ever got in any talk. Uh, I don't know. I don't like Star Wars that much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I watched... Uh, 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 colleagues came to me and said, watch The Mandalorian. It's great. I watched The Mandalorian. I hated it. Uh, okay. Not so popular opinion. Uh, well, I hated it. Okay. Any questions regarding Maven? Yes. Let, let's wait, wait, for, wait for a mic. Thank you. So the people on the recording can, can, can hear what, what we want to talk about. So you touched on extensions there and build plugins. What is it that one can do but the other can't? And um, what situation would you use an extension versus a plugin? Um, I'm not totally sure about that uh, because this is just uh, shifting um, with Maven 4, but the Extensions can do a little bit more if you have to go into the build process and the plugins are like the more standard way to do it. But um, there are really great resources out there and if you want, I can, you can come back and I can connect you so you can see uh, what you want to do. And we wrote a lot of build uh, plugins. We never had the, the need to, to, um, to write an extension because we could always do with the plugins what we wanted to do with the plugins. Yeah, good question. Yeah, thanks. In, in the front. Ah, here. Do you know much about the state of polyglot Maven, where you can use language bindings to make pump files and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know much about that. Uh, my state on, on uh, Maven 4 is that this is just a step between Maven um, 4 and 5, where there will be some changes where there will be two things that Maven does. You have like a descriptor with the POM file, what the dependencies are, and you have um, yeah, the build itself. And um, other repositories like, uh, or build tools like Gradle rely on this information to do their own build. And so this is going to be separated. That's, that's, that's my um, uh, stand-up information, and I, but I don't know much about Polyglot and, and what's, what's going to be there. Yeah. Is there anything you, you want to do with it, or waiting, uh, anything waiting on it? No, I mean, I think a lot of it is just a, a lot of people always complain about the XML syntax and that it's uh, a pain. I think there's a lot of upsides, personally, okay. about it, but yeah, I think a lot of people from the Gradle side consider that a benefit of, of Gradle over Maven. Yeah, uh, I can totally hear that, but uh, they should be grateful that it's not YAML, it's XML, so... Okay. Okay, great. Uh, time is up, I guess. Thank you for your question. Thank you for being here. Thank you for attending. If you have any questions...